Welcome to Healing Wings. It's never a disappointing God. Simple prayer but powerful in its inputs. Welcome once again to Healing Wings. I'm glad to come your way again today with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. He comes with healings in his wings. The Old Testament prophet said, Son of God was manifested with healings. His ministry was a healing ministry. His ministry today is still a healing ministry. He wants people who, he wants people well. I'll be sharing with you the covenant that we have, the covenant of life, the covenant of healing that we have through Jesus Christ. Hang around, I'll be back soon. What taught you me, oh? I taught you me, oh? Oh, Tishelere, oh? I'm glad you are seated, ready to receive God's word. I want to emphasize today that um, it is the will of God for you to be healed. Um, faith actually begins when the will of God is known, when there's no iota of doubt in your heart that it is the will of God for you to be healed. Uh, many people come to God with doubts, wondering whether it is his will, or maybe he wants them to learn some great lesson out of their sickness. And um, some people think that God puts sickness upon them. Now, you, with that kind of mindset, you can never really be healed. You can't really be healed. You can't really have faith enough uh, as required to be healed. And I, I want to help you dispel that doubt today. I want to read an Old Testament scripture. This was uh, after the Israel had crossed the Red Sea and uh, having had victory over, over Pharaoh and his armies, and they were on the other side. Uh, they started out on their journey to the promised land, the journey of 40 years, and God began to teach them his ways, uh, tried to teach them his ways and performing miracles and did so many things in their lives. Uh, after they crossed the Red Sea and um, they were now really rejoicing, Exodus 14, they even sang a song and the women were leading with tambourines and all that. Shortly after, there was trouble. They ran to a place where they, were, they ran into a, a situation, a rough patch when there was no water. Uh, and when they did find water, the water was bitter. And uh, the bitterness of the water uh, made them to complain and to be upset. And God now sent Moses to tell them the words that I'm about to share with you now. And that's in Exodus 15 and verse 26. And he said, God speaking through Moses, if you diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, I will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all the statutes I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healed thee. I am the Lord that healed thee. The Lord healed the bitter water and gave them this and entered into a covenant with them. Uh, that's what is called the healing covenant. He said, I am the Lord that healed thee. I am the Lord your healer. Uh, not your doctor, not your nurse. You know, these people are coming from Egypt. Uh, they are used to 
what you might call Western medicine today. They knew some things about how doctors bring healing to God's people. And uh, the very first covenant God would enter with, with them was the covenant of healing. Because without, without healing, you will not last. Uh, we all get sick at one point or the other. The enemy will see to that. You don't need God for that. You have the enemy watching. Uh, not only that, our physical body, which is death doomed, subject to death, filled with sickness, uh, has the tendency to, 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 to bring uh, uh, sickness to us because it decays. It has a tendency to decay. So uh, God now said to them, look, I want to enter into a covenant with you. I want to swear that I'm going to be your doctor. I'm the Lord, your healer. Uh, we have this song we sing when we, we speak by the Spirit. We say, "I'm the Lord that healeth thee. I'm the Lord that healer. I sent my word and heal your disease. I am the Lord that healer." That is that, that that's what God was saying there. I'm going to be your healer. I'm going to be your doctor. I am your healer. Now that is something God swore to. And that was the first covenant Israel entered into with Israel, taking them from Egypt to the Promised Land. There were so many other covenants that would come along the way, but this was the very first one. And that's to show you how important your health is to God. We see a lot that man can do for himself in our big hospitals, big uh, professors, and people have studied diseases for many years, and they try in so many ways to help us, but they are limited because they are human. Now, God has committed himself to the same, and even much more. He said, I am the Lord, your healer. And that's one major thing that uh, underscored the ministry of Jesus. Jesus came into the world, and the Bible said he went about doing good, healing, all that were praised of the devil. He wasn't just preaching and teaching, he was also healing. Of course, preaching is part of his ministry, was part of his ministry. Teaching is also part of his ministry, but healing also uh, is also part of his ministry. I always tell people that that's about one third of his ministry, if you like, because it went to three parts, preaching, teaching, healing. Healing is one third, at least, of his ministry. So the ministry of Jesus, which he began when he was here in the flesh, continues today. But actually started from the, from the book of Exodus, as they came out of Egypt. God began to heal them. God began to commit himself to their, to their health and well-being. He, he began to say from Exodus, I wish above all things, John's, uh, uh, third John, verse 2, because there's just one chapter there. He says, I wish above all things, some translation says, actually the margin says, I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. I pray, God is saying by the Spirit, saying that I want you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. God, God wants you to be healed. God has committed himself to your healing. He even swore to it by covenant. He went further. In the New Testament, Jesus came, hanging upon the cross. He enacted that same covenant he entered into with Israel, but this time between Jesus and God himself. That's the new covenant of healing. It's not between us and God. It's between Jesus and God. The two of them enter into a covenant. That is, Jesus took our sicknesses and diseases. And God, by that, is saying, I am the Lord that healeth you. I am the Lord that healeth you. In other words, I am the Lord that wants you well. I want you to be well. But you have to believe me. And the way it's proven to us that he wants us to believe him is to swear to an oath in the blood of Jesus. That's the new covenant. That's the New Testament. And that is the healing covenant that you and I have faith enough to believe in. Whenever you take the communion, you remember his body was broken for you. you remember his, the lashes on the back, put on the lacerations that came upon his back, uh, brought about by the Roman, the Roman uh, uh, soldiers. Each of those lashes bring healing to our physical bodies. Each of those lashes, if we believe it. You've got to believe that. Uh, someone said, I don't understand. Well, I don't understand too, but I believe it. And you can't believe it if you want to. And a man's belief system has the capacity to change his life. What you believe has the capacity to transform your life. It has the capacity to bring healing to your body. 
just believe it. I don't understand it, but I believe it. I want to say I cannot believe what I don't understand. Well, then you have a problem right there. That's a real problem for you because you're not going to get anything unless you believe. You can never really get God to do anything for you. Someone say, I don't understand. Well, I don't understand too, but I believe. So I want you to believe even though you don't understand. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Because why will you believe it? Because the word of God says so. And there are testimonies of the fact that those who believe get an answer. Simple logic. So I believe. How do I believe? Say it. Say, I believe it. I believe that Jesus took my sicknesses. I believe that Jesus took my sins. I also believe that he took my sicknesses. He didn't just take my sins. Now, that's easy for many. But do you believe he also took your sicknesses? When you believe, you set into motion a force that cannot be stopped. You set into motion the power that raised him from the dead. Set him you set into motion the same power that is great and is working towards you. The same power that brought salvation to your soul, to your spirit. That same power brings healing to your body by simple faith. That is my experience. That is what the word of God teaches. And I find the word of God to be true. I find the word of God never fails. I find the word of God is settled in heaven. Whatever I said before is still saying today. Whatever is claimed in the, in the Bible days, is still claimed today. And that was what Israel held on to throughout their years in the wilderness. The Bible said there was not a single feeble one among them. Now, can you imagine millions of people going through the wilderness? Not one of them was sick. There were old people. There were young people. For 40 years, they went through the wilderness. None, not a single one of them was sick. Why? Because of that covenant. God swore to an oath, I am your healer. Believe that oath. Believe the covenant. Believe in his blood. Believe what he has accomplished for you. Believe it in your heart. You have the capacity to. You have the faith to be saved from your sins. You have the faith to be healed of your diseases. If only you believe it. To believe it might be a struggle for some of you. You rather believe the words of the doctor. You believe the words of your, of your neighbor. Who says, ah, that thing... Somebody believed he didn't receive, he died. I know somebody who believed and he, he, he eventually had to be, he had to be, they had to cut off his leg and all that stuff. Now, I hear all those things every day, but I've decided to shut my mind against those ones. I'd rather believe the word of God. God says, I am the Lord. God is speaking. I am the Lord that healeth you. Can you believe today? He is my Lord that healeth me. I would like to pray with you if you believe. It will make a difference. I can tell you that you'll be healed of every sickness. You'll be healed of every pain. Growths will disappear. Conditions will change. Things will happen around you that could never happen otherwise. Faith in God is the victory. So I want to underscore the law of faith. The law of faith. It is a law. The Bible calls it a law. Uh, the principles of faith are on legal grounds. That is, like every other law, it has principles. And the authority of faith is that you must say what God is saying. You must declare or you must believe what you say before it can be called faith. It's not just enough to say. It's important that you believe. When you believe, then you give uh, the words that you speak or whatever it is that you're expecting from God, the power and the backing to make it happen. So it's not just enough to pray, you must believe in the law of faith. What is the law of faith? Very simply put, it is that when you speak a word in prayer, which essentially must be the word of God, you should expect it to happen. You should expect a manifestation. It's not just enough to pray. It's not just enough to say. It's not just enough to say, well, uh, I believe in my heart. When you believe in your heart, you must say what you believe in your heart for it to happen. So I want you to believe today uh, as I pray for you because that is the law. And I would like you to also say, after I finish praying for you, what I say in my prayer for you. I find out that this is an area where many of us miss it. And that's why many times when we say prayer, we don't get any answers to it. Jesus went ahead to underscore this fact. When he said, this is now Mark 11.22 was what I quoted earlier on. Mark 11.22 says, have faith in God. Mark 11.23 says, Jesus speaking, For verily I say unto you that whosoever 
shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Whosoever will say to a mountain, and shall not doubt, or shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever. Therefore I said to you, says in verse 24, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe. Believe. Don't just pray. Don't just desire. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. That is the law of faith. Believe. You must believe with your heart. With the heart, a man believes. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So prayer becomes powerful only when there is faith in it. Prayer is empty without faith. Prayer doesn't avail much because it's the prayer of faith that heals the sick. And that's what I want to pray for you now. I'll pray for you the prayer of faith and you'll be healed. Now, like you saw in that place, you speak to the mountain, you speak to the sickness, and you believe God. You don't speak to God. You speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain and you believe God. When you believe God, what you've spoken will happen. If, as you speak, you believe. If you don't believe, it won't happen. I've seen faith do many things. Uh, faith is the victory. Love is the key. When we humble ourselves to sanctify the Lord God in our hearts, to sanctify, that's what, that, that's the way, uh, I think I'll read this other scripture for you before, before I pray today. Uh, First Peter chapter 3, verse um, 15. It's a very interesting scripture because it's, it's speaking to Christians. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Sanctify the Lord God in your heart. That is, let your heart believe God alone. Believe in God. Believe in his word. Sanctify him in your heart. And be ready always to give an answer to everyone that asks you a question, a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Sanctify the Lord God in your heart. That is, let the Lord God be the only thing your heart believes. Let the word of God be what you believe. And then you'll be ready to give an answer. You must come to the point in which your heart believes the word of God. The word of God is what has been sent to heal us. God heals us by his word. People talk about the power of God, yes, but the power of God is based on the word of God. The power of God is in the word of God. So when you put the word of God in your heart, your heart believes the word then the power of God is released. Somebody says it's difficult. You know why it is difficult? Because the word of God has lost its position in our lives. Many times we don't believe the word of God and that's why we take a lot of time to have to explain that you put the word of God, believe it for what it says. Don't argue. Don't reason it out. Don't uh, think it out. No, just believe it. You may not fully understand it, but believe it. I don't believe, I don't understand everything, but I believe the word of God. And when you believe the word of God, great things can happen. I want to pray for you. And as I pray for you today, I believe God that your heart will hold on to the word, believe it. As I speak to the mountain, the mountain will move and healing will come your way. Stand by. I'll be praying with you shortly. Life is a journey. If anybody told me while I was young that life would be full of ups and downs, I probably would not understand. This is to God who is my guide and I owe everything I am and everything I have to Him. In the midst of situations and circumstances I came up against, faith was my companion. My names are Alex. This is my journey of faith and grace. Scars of Faith recalls the journey of the senior pastor, architect Alex Adigui, and his victorious healing breakthrough. Get your copy today from the bookstand, also available online. Scars of Faith. Now, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to every mountain of sickness, every mountain of disease in the bodies of your people that are listening to me today. 
you gather them to be listening at this point in time because you want to perform a miracle in their lives. I speak to the mountain and I command every sickness, every disease, every pain, every discomfort, every malfunctioning to cease in the name of Jesus. Leave their body. Leave their body in the name of Jesus. I speak to your mountain. The Bible says if I will speak to the mountain, the mountain will obey me. Now you obey in the name of Jesus. Obey the voice of your maker. Be thou removed and be thou thrown away. Leave their body alone in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the healing that is being wrought right now. The same power that raised up Jesus from the dead is walking towards you wherever you are now. Receive it. Believe it. Believe that you are healed. You can even say it. I'm healed. I'm whole. I believe. Even if you're in a wheelchair, you can rise up now and say, I rise up in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is, I rise up, like a young man told me, said, I want to walk. Now you want to walk, get up from that place and begin to walk. Begin to walk in the name of Jesus. Speak to the mountain and believe and it shall be yours. Thank you, precious Father, for answered prayers. We give you the praise. We promise you always take the glory, Lord. Thank you, precious Lord. Glory and honor is yours. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you next time again. Healing Wings. shows up. Thanksgiving is in response to the acts of God. Praise is in response to his ways. Worship is in response to his presence.